Hello everyone, Calamity here today with a guide for how to set up your Toma for a Burgeon team. Burgeon's a highly recommended team comp that's going to get you through the second half of the Spiral Abyss with ease. It's also just a very strong team comp overall, excelling both in dealing with groups of enemies as well as single target damage. So we're going to go over everything you need to know about how to set up Toma appropriately for this team setup. We're going to go over talents, we're going to go over weapon recommendations, artifacts, teammates, and of course we're going to do the Spiral Abyss Showcase at the very end so you can see the team in action. Now before we actually start talking about Toma's uh, build setup, let's actually talk about what Burgeon is and how you set it up. Uh, really quickly, we're just going to go over it. So you need three elements in a Burgeon comp. You need Pyro, which we got covered thanks to Toma. Uh, you're going to need Hydro, and you're going to need a Dendro character. Now, I should have some gameplay uh, footage popping up, and it'll show you the actual how to set it up there. But basically, you need the Dendro and the Hydro character to mix on an enemy. Basically, you need to apply both of their elements on an enemy to create the Bloom reaction. When you do the Bloom reaction, that is when you create what's called a Dendro Core. They look like gigantic green seeds that'll spawn on the ground. Think of these Dendro Cores as basically bombs. And that is what we use Pyro, again in this case Toma, is our trigger for the bombs. When you do Pyro on these Dendro Cores, that is what causes the Burgian elemental reaction and it causes these cores to explode in a larger aoe and deal more damage than they would normally do so that's just like a quick summary of how burgeon works you're definitely going to see it a lot more uh, later on especially when i'm in the spiral abyss later so hopefully that was easy to understand uh next up is how do you scale the damage of burgeon reactions and to do that there's two ways that we do that we do that with elemental mastery and some people sometimes forget that your character level is really important for elemental reactions so most people do really well in understanding that yeah if i'm doing an elemental reaction team-based comp i need elemental mastery and you can see in the text here uh it increases the damage of burgeon by 458.3 percent now this is updated in real time so if i were to get more elemental mastery than that percentage you're seeing would actually increase so as you can see mine only has 803 which is very doable for most characters these days uh but definitely i could get more if you know if i just rolled better artifacts or it teammate buffs etc etc the other way that we scale burgeon damage is again by character level now this is something i've seen a lot of people neglect and I've, i'll see them say something like oh my toma's burgeons aren't really doing as much damage as yours i only see them doing like 18k 20k but yours are doing like 30 40k what's up what's the difference or what am i doing wrong i, I followed the build and everything <laughs> And you'll see that their Toma is only level like 70 or something, 70, 80. If your Toma is not level 90, you're actually missing out anywhere from like 20 to 30% increased damage from just getting him to level 90 alone. It is very, it is that important to get your Toma to a higher level or to the max level, I should say, as well as getting a high amount of elemental mastery. So that's basically how version works and how we scale the damage on it so let's move on to his talents when it comes to toma's talents for a version comp you actually don't need to level any of them because leveling toma's talents does nothing for version's damage in itself it'll make his shields that he provides a little bit better but because again that we're building toma in a way that's meant for damage and not to scale his shields upgrading his shield scaling isn't really going to do much for us but with that being said, let's go over each individual talent anyways. So we have the regular normal attack from Toma. As you can see, there are no special uh, mechanics to his normal attack. It is just a standard uh, normal attack talent that you've seen on other characters. We can see the attributes, nothing special there. So let's just move on to the elemental skill, which is called Blazing Blessing. Now there's a lot of text here, so let's try to shorten it up for you. So basically, Toma's going to do a kick. And he's going to do AoE Pyro damage. And then he's also going to create a shield. His shield has a special name. It's called a Blazing Barrier. But we can just say Toma's shield or just shield in general. Since we are not building Toma as a shield character, we're just going to skip over his shield mechanics here. Uh, as they are not important for the build. But basically, they are just the shields are just scaled off his HP. 
But once again, for Burgeon teams, we're only concerned with the fact that he does AoE pyro damage when he uses uh, his skill. So let's move on to the burst, which is called Crimson. Oh boy. Ui Yoroi. I, I don't know how to say that word. I'm sorry. I'm just going to call it his burst. So once again, we have a lot of text here, but let's just shorten it down. So Toma's going to do yet another AoE pyro damage attack. In addition to that attack, you're going to get what's called the Scorching Toma's Elemental Burst buff. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that word. So when it, when this buff is in effect, your normal attacks will trigger what's called a Fiery Collapse, which does AoE damage, AoE Pyro damage, and it will summon a Blazing Barrier. And the Fiery Collapse, which is also really good for triggering Burgeon reactions, can only be triggered once every second. So we can see here that even at level 11, the skill multipliers on it are pretty low. And we can see that the shield damage absorption is pretty low itself. And that's because you're basically constantly reapplying a new shield on yourself with each fiery collapse. Um, but that's really, again, not important. But it is important to note that he does have a very expensive energy cost here at 80, which is unfortunate. And it's the reason why we build a lot of energy recharge for Toma. Next up, we have his Ascension talents here. We have Imbricated Armor. So when the current active character obtains or refreshes a Blazing Barrier, this character's shield strength will increase for 5% for 6 seconds. And this effect can stack uh, 5 times. So basically... Keep making those shields either from his burst or his skill, and his shield strength just increases. So his shields get a little bit beefier. Again, I'm going to sound like a broken record saying this, but it has to be stated. Not important for us because we're not scaling his shields. Next up, we have Flaming Assault, which unfortunately, another not so great uh, Ascension passive for us. It's just going to make your burst damage. The, uh, the Fiery Collapse is going to be increased by 2.2% of Toma's max HP. Again, it's not so much the damage from Toma's skills that we care about. It's the fact that he's applying Pyro in an AoE that we care about for the Burgeon team. Lastly, he has a fishing passive talent called Snap and Swing. And when you fish in Inazuma... Toma has a chance to double your catch. So if you're trying to farm fish for the catch or whatever else you're trying to farm for fish, Toma's going to help you get there a bit faster. Next up, we're going to move to the weapon recommendations here. And the first weapon that I highly, highly recommend, I cannot recommend anything else more, is the Kitane Cross Spear. And that is because this is a free-to-play weapon and it's actually one of his best options. This is a weapon you can craft in Inazuma. Yes, it can be frustrating to farm because you're going to need a lot of those amethyst lumps as well as the uh, weapon crafting materials you get from weekly bosses. And those we all know those have a terrible drop rate. But please, please, please do your best to get your hands on a Katane Cross Spear. It gives you the best of both worlds. So as a subset, it gives you 110 elemental mastery, which is great. More damage for our Burgeon. And the weapons effect is going to basically give you a bunch of free energy when you use the skill. So really quickly, when you use your elemental skill, you're going to lose three energy initially. But as you can see at refinement five, we gain five energy every two seconds for the next six seconds. So we gain, we lose three, but we gain 15 energy uh, over six seconds. That is incredible. And that's going to help reduce your energy recharge in each by a bunch. But yes, I do know that farming for amethyst slums and trying to get a free to play weapon for refinement five can be painful, especially if you're new, please do your best to try to get this weapon. It, it's going to be saving you so much time and effort when building him. Now, that being said, let's say, Hey, I got a ton of energy recharge on my Toma. I even have the C4 constellation for more energy. Like I don't need this. I want more damage. What can I give him? You can give him a dragon's bane. Because the Dragon's Bane, mine's not level 90 here, as you can see, but when you actually get to level 90, the Dragon's Bane provides way more elemental mastery uh, than the Katane Crossbear. It's like almost double what the uh, Katane Crossbear gives. The other weapon I can recommend is a Favonius Lance, only if you're really struggling to get energy recharge on your Toma. But again, I'm just going to go back to it. This is the best end slot weapon you can get for Toma when building him in a Burgeon team. Artifacts! Don't judge me by that purple one, okay? It was really hard to farm these, and that's why this guy took forever. 
For artifacts, though, the number one set when it comes to Burgeon teams is going to be a Flower of Paradise Lost. You're going to have to hike it all the way to the desert in Simru for the domain, but it is really, really worth your time to get this set. It basically increases your Burgeon damage by 80% and provides you 80 Elemental Mastery on the two-piece effect. Really, really good there, but let's say, hey, I don't want to do that set. Can you offer me alternatives? Sure. I can. Um, the first one's going to be the Gilded Dreams. This set is basically going to give you a bunch of extra elemental mastery, which is going to be in turn much more damage. So it it is a good secondary option if for whatever reason you don't want a Flower of Lost Paradise. Another set that I can recommend is going to be, this is actually kind of a rare one, Crimson Witch of the Flame. I only recommend this early on, but I don't recommend farming the actual domain for this set because i would recommend you guys just use the mystic offering instead to trade in your crappier artifacts to just get crimson witch pieces instead but um for those that don't know on the four piece effect for a crimson witch it does increase your da burgeon damage by 40 percent but again remember that the flower of paradise lost does it by 80 percent once you get the full effect uh going other sets that I can recommend are going to be something like, you know, two-piece Emblem of Severed Fate and then like a two-piece Wanderer's Troop for Energy Recharge and then Elemental Mastery. Or you could do, you know, Wanderer's Troop and Gilded Dreams two-piece for 160 Elemental Mastery. That works too, but those are definitely the filler set. At the end of the day, again, I'm going to recommend you a Flower of Paradise Lost. It's going to be the best one. Now that you've settled on an artifact set, what substats are we looking for and that's pretty easy again we're looking for elemental mastery first and foremost that is going to mean more damage for our toma so the second most important stat is energy recharge now again it's really hard to recommend a specific amount for each character because every team is going to be different right i don't know what teammates you're running your toma with do they have favonius weapons maybe that'll help reduce his energy needs do you have the contain cross spirit refinement five also reduces his energy needs do you have him at c4 also going to help reduce your re energy recharge needs so a general number that i can give you that'll be solid for toma is anywhere between 180 to 200 percent energy recharge for more consistent burst uptime again getting his burst is important because of the aoe pyro application and the fiery collapse that's just going to be consistent Pyro damage for consistent burgeon damage, and that's exactly what we want. But for other substats, once you get elemental mastery and energy recharge, then you can try to go for some HP if you want, just to get a little bit of, you know, of that shield scaling in effect. Because you might as well, because attack does nothing for burgeon, tom uh, burgeon comp, excuse me, and neither does crit rate or crit damage. Those do nothing. You cannot crit. Uh, a burgeon hit unless you're using the heat c2 but that's another whale territory story there so elemental mastery energy recharge and then some hp if you can as for the main stats for the sands the goblet and the circlet they're all going to be the same we're looking for elemental mastery as the main stat now this took me forever to farm i was really unlucky i was doing nothing but farming this particular set in the in the domain for two weeks straight and i just could not get elemental mastery i finally just gave in and i settled for a purple uh artifact piece because i just couldn't find anything and it actually rolled pretty well which sucks because it means upgrading it's going to be kind of a pain but you want elemental mastery on every piece you can get the only piece that i would say is interchangeable is the sands uh, maybe you can get an energy recharge one on this one only if you're really really struggling on getting energy recharge for your Toma. But consider upgrading it to an Elemental Mastery main stat one in the future. Next up, let's talk about constellations for Toma. So his C1 is called a Comrade's Duty. And it's going to reduce the cooldown of both his skill and burst when you are attacked while having his Blazing Barrier active. Which is actually really nice and it just means your rotations are going to be a little bit smoother. And you won't have to worry about his cooldowns being, you know. Also worth noting that this effect can only be triggered once every 20 seconds. So it's not like it's a big, big cooldown reduction, but it is a welcome one. Next up, we have a C2, a subordinate skills. This is going to increase your burst duration by 3 seconds, which is great. Again, that just means more time to do fiery collapse uh, normal attack hits. 
C3 and C5 are going to increase his skill and burst respectively. Again, this does not increase our Bergian damage in any way, but this will improve his shield scaling, so I guess beef your shields somewhat, uh, which is, you know, that's okay, I guess. C4 is probably going to be one of his best constellations because when you use his burst, he immediately restores 15 energy uh, to Toma himself. So it basically reduces that 80 cost uh, elemental burst we saw earlier into a 65, which is much, much more manageable and definitely reduces your energy recharge needs when building him. C6, unfortunately, just doesn't do anything for us. It's when you have a blazing barrier on Toma, you have an increased damage for your normal charged and plunging attacks by 15% for 6 seconds. Very, very unfortunate here uh, that this C6 isn't anything greater. Alright, team setups. Let's talk about teammates for your Toma's Burgeon team. Ignore the bottom left name, please. <laughs> I'm running out of team slots. So your Burgeon team will look something like this. Now I tried to use as many 4 stars or free-to-play characters as I could. And honestly, the fourth slot in the team like this is a flex slot, and it's up to you who you want to use. Um, but if you're looking for alternatives for Jing Cho or uh, Dendro Traveler, I mean, you could use Kali for Dendro Traveler or Yao Yao uh, for Jing Cho. It's really hard to replace him just because he does apply so much Hydro, but I mean, you could use Kakomi as well or Barbara. Uh, to a lesser extent, if you have uh, either of those characters. But Jing Cho really is going to help you a lot uh, when it comes for hydro comes to Hydro application. So if you're looking for recommendations for that fourth slot, I've seen people use, you know, like Zhang Li as an option, because since we're not really building Toma's shield um, in his kit, you know, maybe you could provide an actual shield for your team, so you could bring someone like... Zhongli won't mess with your reactions, neither will uh, Layla. She might, you might get like an occasional freeze, but Layla is also a really good shield that doesn't mess with your Dendro cores. Another popular character to use in a team like this is Sucrose or Kazuha, because animal characters, well, I should say CC characters, can actually pull your Dendro cores together to group them up so that you can actually do really big version damage all at once. Not to mention, Sucrose also provides additional EM for her team, resulting in big, big damage. Kazuha, however, is the better grouper in my opinion. For the fourth slot, you can also bring additional elements of a... Like, if you feel like your Dendro is lacking or something, maybe you could bring both Dendro, you know, Traveler, and Kali, or Ingen Giaoya, or Kirara, or uh, Baiju... There's a lot of options for your fourth slot. It can be any number of characters. Um, the only element I don't recommend bringing at all is anything Electro. So don't bring Kuki Shinobu, Fischl, Raiden Shogun. And that's because they can steal, quote unquote, your Denjo cores and activate the Hyper Bloom uh, reaction instead. And we don't want that because the whole point of this team is for Toma to deal damage, not the Electro uh, character you're bringing along. All right, last but not least, we have the combat showcase for Toma's uh, team here. Now, I know you're probably looking at my team comp and going, yo, what the heck is that? I see a little cabbage uh, in your team there instead of Dendro uh, Traveler. And you're right, that is because Nahida is going to be way better at playing Dendro in this team. Plus, I'm using Dendro Traveler on my first half team, which is the Hyper Bloom team. And I feel like Nahida is better uh, used on the second half. So I'm sorry, you know, that we're in a little bit of pay-to-win territory with not with me using not a free-to-play or a free-to-access character at the moment. And the second part you're probably noticing is why the heck is Bennett in your team? I thought you don't want other characters, you know, triggering the Burgeon. And you're absolutely right, you don't want Bennett to trigger it because I haven't built him for Elemental Mastery. The reason Bennett is here is to provide healing for the team and to help with the cryo shields from the heralds because those things are annoying as heck. So he's he's actually just not here for he's not here for that buff that everyone uses him for. He's actually here just to heal and for extra pyro application for shields. That's literally it. So that being said, let's uh let's try to clear the second half of the abyss with this team. We're gonna do all three chambers. Alright, we're going to try to quickly break these two and then shields real fast. And 
There we go. Big burgeon damage right there, which is fantastic. Then we're gonna... We're gonna focus on the uh, cryo dudes if we can. It's very hard to see this... What's going on in this fight sometimes. That's also annoying. Big damage right there. Fantastic. There we go. Gonna back up because we're all gonna do that. We definitely want to try to focus the um the cryo ones here because they are the harder ones to break. The water ones will break normally. Hopefully. I'm more concerned about the cryo shields. We're getting beat up! Oh. I don't like them, uh, I don't like them separating like that. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Whoops. Just need one more, just need one more. There you go. Woo. That was a little too close for comfort. I was a little panicky towards the end. Alright, this chamber is actually going to be really great for Toma because it's going to showcase our single target capabilities with the Burgeon team comp and an annoying boss at that. So we're going to just pop our alt here. Oops. I really should do the... It's the burst first, then the skill. I keep getting that mixed up. But yeah, we can, we're already doing a pretty good chunk of damage here. Let's try to get, um... Let's try to get Bennett's burst back so I can heal Nahida real fast. Lost the boss. Oh. Oh, that's convenient. So there we go, we're just going to, uh... Basically melt this boss, as you can see, but let's... I was gonna say, let's try to build some energy for the third chamber, but I guess not. It's okay, that was pretty fast, right? Can I just say how much I hate the first half of this chamber? Oh, it takes me forever to get past it. Anyways, hey, we're in the last chamber, third chamber, second half here, and this is going to be the uh, Inquitidus Baptist, or whatever his name is. Uh, this boss basically has a lot of shields, so we both get to showcase shield breaking and single target once again. Alright, hopefully we can get it in this run. Uh, I've been trying this for a lot of times, so it's been really annoying, but hopefully we can get it here. All right, we're gonna tag with Nahida. Gonna pop all the bursts. Quickly destroy the shield, and then we're gonna use Nahida here because she can keep applying Dendro as well. And we're getting ready for the next shield. Interweave some into elemental skills there. I really don't like when I don't get the uh, reset, but that's okay. That's okay. We're like messing up the uh, rotation a little bit, but that's all right. It's all right. I'm gonna use Benny here to just help me break the shield a little bit faster. He's gonna do Hydra again because we know the order. It always goes Pryo, Hydro, and then Pyro. So he's gonna do Pyro here. We are good. We're gonna use Nihita to finish this guy off. This boss fight's pretty boring, but as you can see, that took so many tries. You guys don't even know because I added this stuff out, but that took so many tries. Not because this chamber was hard for Toma, but because the previous one. It's my first half team that you guys aren't seeing. The Consecrated Beast gave me so much trouble. Just so much trouble. It's just annoying, but sorry, that has nothing to do with this guide. That's more of a, I, I guess, skill issue, whatever, but... That is the Abyss. Three stars in all three chambers using this Toma team. Or at least for the second half. Alright, so we'll uh, say some final words about Toma and uh, we'll wrap this puppy up. So Toma was first introduced into this game as a shielder, a four star shielder. And he just wasn't popular when on his initial release because at the time, 
most players already had Zhang Li. He already had at that point like a rerun or banner two or two at that point. So when Toma came out, everyone's like, we already kind of have a healer. And not only that, people also have Diona, right? Diona also heals. Toma, with his kit alone without Dendro, he is just a shielder and he provides some very, very minor buffs to the team and he has very poor off-field uh, pyro application like unlike you know Jean Ling everyone was using Jean Ling or Bennett for their pyro needs and I feel like burgeon comps in general just kind of went under the radar for the longest time at least until this spiral biz popped out and definitely made people are more aware of how good burgeon is now especially when it comes to shield break so hopefully I was able to showcase in the spiral biz that hey burgeon team comps are really really strong and they're both good for, again, single target. We took down two bosses relatively quickly. As well as groups of enemies. The first chamber isn't really so much as the groups. It's more shield break. But, again, this comp is good for anything. Because if you just pair up this team with someone like Sucrose or Kaza, well, then you can just group up, you know, crowds of enemies and easy, easy big nuke damage. I am exhausted because I've been playing so much Spiral Abyss right now, if you couldn't tell. Uh, again, the issues I had had nothing to do with this team in particular. It was mainly my first half team that was having such an annoying time dealing with the Consecrated Beasts. I absolutely hate that chamber. Uh, but enough about that. That is going to do it for this Toma Guide. If you feel like I missed anything, or if you have any additional questions on how the team works, Feel free to ask me in the comments down below. I'll do my best to try to answer you. But with that being said, that is going to be a wrap for this guide. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Helps out the channel a lot. I'll be making lots more Genshin character uh, guides in the future. So if you like that kind of content, stick around. And I'm trying to also branch into other games like Honkai Star Rail eventually. So if you want more guides, subscribe. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.